hold a public hearing for our, our annual performance report. At this time, Dr. Hines, our Deputy Superintendent, will present the report. At the end of the report, if, if anyone has comments, uh, you can uh, certainly make them. If you'll approach the podium, state your name, and keep your comments to about two minutes. Okay, at this time, I'll turn it over to Dr. Hines. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. President, husbands, members of the Board of Trustees, audience, uh, thank you tonight. Uh, it is a privilege for me every year to be able to present the annual performance report. And um, this is the 2014 annual performance report that's actually based on a compilation of several reports. And um, it is available in its entirety on our website. It is a compilation, actually, as I mentioned, of several reports and documents, which include the following. And so it does get a little bit confusing, and I apologize, everybody. First and foremost is the TAPER, or the Texas Academic Performance Report. And this comes out annually and includes the district bilingual and ESOL report. And that just came out recently um, and is now available in its entirety. The PEAMS Financial Standards Report. And this is a report that comes out annually. It is another year behind, so that is for the year 2012-2013, and that is also available online. The campus performance objectives, which actually are the campus improvement plans, which are all available online, as well as the report on violent or criminal incidents, including our policies and procedures for violence intervention, which are also available online. And uh, finally, is the report on graduates enrolled in Texas institutions of higher education. And this includes student enrollment and academic performance in post-secondary institutions during their first year enrolled after high school graduation. And that report is actually going to look back at the students that graduated in 2012, whose first year of college would have been in the year of 2013. Uh, so I do apologize. Different reports have different snapshots. If you were at the board meeting in October when I presented SAT and S ACT data and advanced placement data, I would just note that we get lots of reports from lots of different groups. And so some of that data was from College Board and, um, and different snapshots in time. So uh, please just be mindful of that. So the TAPER provides results from the STAR test as well as our tax, which is being phased out. It includes a star progress measure. It includes fifth and sixth year extended graduation rate, which was new starting last year. We started tracking students further out to see if they came back in the fifth year, did they graduate? And then also the PEAMS financial standards report is a separate, it used to be included in the academic excellence uh, indicator system, uh, but is now published on the TEA website. One of the parts of the taper looks at uh, just the uh, makeup of the district and some of the demographic trends. We, uh, in 2014, we had an enrollment of 54,808 students. Our membership uh, was approximately 6.3% African American, 34.2% Hispanic, 52.7% White, 0.5% American Indian, 3.5% Asian, 0.2% Asian uh, Pacific Islander, and 2.7% two or more races. We had a 36.2% economically disadvantaged percentage of students. And um, we had 1.1% of our students that received disciplinary placements. That's actually down. And 12.3% of our students were uh, classified as English language learners. There's lots of reports in the taper about academic performance. I won't go through all of them. I went through all the reports. You'll probably be here. Uh, tomorrow still, so I won't go through it. I'm just going to hit some of the highlights. And for um, <clears throat> context, we have several outstanding school districts in our area, so I often put their data in the report just so we can see how we did in comparison to some other districts, um, just to get a feel for what does it mean. So um, in 2014, level two, which is passing all subjects, how many of our students, what percentage of our students passed all of their subjects? That was 87% compared to 77% at the state level. For our English language learners passing all of their tests at level two, that was 64% compared to 57% at the state level. 
performing at level three, which is the uh, higher performance level on the test, we had 26% of our students perform at that level on all subjects compared to 15% at the state level. In terms of students who failed the prior year and passed the, the, the following year in grades four through eight, we had 53, 52% pass in reading and 53% pass in math in that group compared to 45% in reading and 46% in math at the state level. Another area we look at is how our students that are economically disadvantaged performance, how they perform. We're passing the start level two and level three. Uh, we had 76% of our students pass at level two on all the tests and 11% at level three on all the tests and, um, compared to 69% and 9% at the state level. Another area that we look at that we're required to track is the success of our interventions on students. So we have data on um, students that, that failed the EOC, that passed it in July, uh, whether or not they had a, su a summer intervention. And we did this by subject. Uh, in Algebra 1, 68% of our students that had the intervention passed, compared to 32% who did not. 69% passed in English 1. 63% in English 2 and 58% in biology. Um, so our students did uh, very well that had an intervention. In terms of the percent of our students that met or exceeded progress on the test, which was a new indicator, so not just whether they passed, but whether they met or exceeded the expected progress from a year's growth at the state level, 61% in met that in reading and 60% in math. And in Conroe, we had 66% meet that in reading and 65% in math. Our attendance rate in 2013, that's looking back, the year was 95.8%. We're working to improve that. That's an area for uh, targeting. Something we're very proud of has been our dropout rate and our completion rates. Uh, in 2013, and this is based on students that would have uh, been in that cohort, uh, students in, in that year, grades 7 and 8, we had zero dropouts. And in grades 9 through 12, we had a 0.5% dropout rate compared to the state level of 0.4% in grades 7 and 8 and 2.2% in grades 9 through 12. In tracking a cohort, we'll look at students that started and finished high school four years later. So for the class of 2013, we had 95.1% of our students graduate compared to 88% at the state level. 1.1% of our students received a GED compared to 0.8% at, at the state level. 2.3% of our students continued compared to 4.6% at the state level. 1.5% dropped out compared to 6.6% at the state level. We looked at that at the five-year level, that 95.5 went up to 97.1% uh, graduation rate, so that, uh, that we continued to, to, to convert some of those continued students into graduates looking at the five-year cohort. For the recommended plan and distinguished achievement plan, the graduation programs that we'll be phasing out with the new graduation programs, 88% uh, of our students in the class of 2013 graduated with the, either the DAP or the recommended plan. One of, the, one of the other areas we look at are the percent of students that take advanced placement tests. Those are the tests that students um, can take to uh, potentially receive college credit. We had 33.2% of our students that took AP test compared to 22.1% at the state level. And which percent scored above the criterion? That would have been 65.7% compared to 50.9% at the state level. Percent of graduates that were tested on the SAT or the ACT was 69.5% in the class of 2013 compared to 63.8% at the state level. And 
43.6% of those students scored at or above the criterion compared to 25.4% at the state level. For the class of 2013, our average SAT score was uh, 1,563 compared to 1,422 at the state level. And you can see that we had a little jump from 2012. As for the ACT score in 2013, it was 23.3 compared to 20.6 at the state level, and that's a, a little bit up from 22.9 the prior year. I mentioned earlier that one of the reports is our uh, financials, and uh, this looks back at the 2013-14 tax rate, so we're going back in time, and in that year our tax rate was $1.28.5. You can see how we compared to some of the other outstanding districts that we were um, using as a context earlier. We did very well. Also worth noting the financial allocation study for Texas or the FAST is a report that's released by the Texas Comptroller's Office that rates school districts on their academic performance mm -hmm. in relation to their cost to taxpayers. The Conroe Independent School District is one of only four school districts in Texas to have earned five stars in each of the five years since the inception of the program, and that's something to celebrate. So that's a very prestigious award. In terms of the percentage of operating expenditures and looking at all funds, uh, something that we worked on over the years has been to increase the percentage of our overall expenditures that went to instruction, and that's up above the state average. And it wasn't that many years ago, I know when Mr. Cox showed a slide and we were below the state, average in that we're, we've surpassed the state at that level. A couple of the other areas point out we're uh, a little above state average on school leadership, 6.04 compared to 5.76. We use 3.79% uh, of our budget for guidance and counseling compared to 3.49% at the state level. Uh, and in terms of general administration, we're at 1.6% compared to 3.10% at the state level. In security, 1.05% uh, compared to 0.78% uh, at the state level. So there are some, some areas for context. Another piece of information that's provided in the report is about our staff. 51.7% of our staff are teachers compared to 51% at the state level. 2.7% uh, of our staff work at the campus administration level compared to 2.9% at the state level. 0.4% of our staff works in central office compared to 1.0% at the state level. 27.9% of our staff is, works in auxiliary departments compared to 26.3% at the state level. The average year of experience for our teachers is 11.6 years compared to 11.2 at the state level. The average years in district is 7.5 compared to 7.6, and our turnover rate is 13.1% compared to 16.2% at the state level. The average teacher salary uh, was $51,925 in the year of 2013-14 compared to the state average of $49,692. Criminal incidents, I mentioned earlier that one of the reports that we're uh, required <coughs> to make every year is the we report certain offenses that are that happen on campuses. We had 47 reported incidents at 12 different campuses last year. <clears throat> 37 of those were felony controlled substance, and I'll point out that the most common source of those illegal drugs remains the medicine cabinet. Uh, so it's still one of our uh, biggest challenges. We had two guns that were found in parked cars on campus. We had a club and one set of brass knuckles that were brought on campuses as well. The, the entire report, again, is listed on our website, um, as well as a five-year trend. show a five-year trend as well. And the final part of the uh, annual report includes how our students do when they go to college. And uh, so this looks at students who graduated in 2012 who entered a Texas four-year or two-year college in 2013. And again, this doesn't report uh, out-of-state schools or certain private schools, but the schools, the colleges that do participate. Um, and I'll point out, too, that even though we might have students in a row, we didn't always get data back on them. So, um, but we had a total of 1,755 students from that graduating class that 
went to a two or four year university or college, um, and just the breakdown of how they fall on campus, and then how they do when they got there. And obviously, one of our goals is we want our students to be successful when they get to college. We had 387 of those students that had less than a 2.0 GPA. We had 243 that had a GPA above 2.0 but less than 2.5. 276 of those graduates had between a 2.5 and a 2.99. 322 had a B, the average, and then 374 were uh, had a GPA between 3.5 and 4.0 after their first year in college. So uh, again, that's some interesting data worth looking at and how we can better prepare our graduates. As I mentioned, the annual performance report includes several of these and they're all available online. Uh, and mostly it's just a, a series of links to those reports. And that concludes the presentation. Okay, at this time, if anybody would like to make a comment, we'll ask you to approach the podium. Okay, that concludes our report. Thank you. Call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. It is 616. Uh, if you will join me in standing, Mr. Sanders will uh, lead us in the invocation, and Mr. Williams will lead us with the pledge. Each day, at our schools, we start with a moment of silence, uh, allowing everyone in their own way to have a moment to express thanksgiving to their maker for another day of life, to acknowledge that there is a power greater than ourselves. I call him God. It allows me to show my willingness <coughs> to accept that I need this power in my life, to express my appreci appreciation to my maker for caring for me and for leading me down the right paths and giving me opportunity to admit that I'm not alone and that I have people who have been spiritually placed in my path to encourage me, to protect me, and to provide me a positive example. In a moment, I will ask you to join me in taking just a brief moment so that you may reflect on your own personal life however you want. My time of reflection will be that our teachers, our faculty, and our administration will be blessed for the calling that they have made to our students in our district and that our students will be blessed to know that they have adults who care about their education, who care about their learning, and who care about their lives. If you would, please join me in a moment of silence to reflect on why we are here, who we are serving, and the one that makes it all possible. Thank you. Pleasure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> On honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Sanders. <coughs> Williams. Item 2A, uh, Special District Recognition, Dr. Stockton. Uh, January is School Board Appreciation Month in the state of Texas, and here to make comments on behalf of the campuses is Linda Cruz, Principal of Bucklew Elementary School. President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, it is my honor to stand in front of you as spokesperson for all Conroe ISD administrators, educators, staff members, and students to personally thank each and every one of you for all you do for the Conroe Independent School District. Daily, you demonstrate strength and dedication as you focus on excellence for CISD communities, teachers, staff members, and most importantly, our students. You unselfishly contribute your time and talents toward the advancement of our schools and the students we serve. You're extraordinary individuals who have voluntarily tackled the enormous job of governing our school district. Your actions and decisions affect the present and future lives of our children. Though we are making a special effort this month to show our appreciation, please know we're thankful for all that you do 365 days a year. 
Our students have demonstrated their appreciation by providing the cards, posters, banners, small gifts, drawings, and candy that you see here tonight. Please accept these tokens as our expression of thanks for your leadership, support, and for the numerous hours you give to make our district the outstanding place that it truly is to live, to work, and to go to school. In many ways, you're helping to ensure that our students graduate with confidence and competence. In doing so, you're also helping to build strong and fix, build strong families in a caring and active community. I ask everyone in attendance tonight to join with me in a round of applause to honor and thank the CISD Board of Trustees for their hard work, dedication, and commitment to creating a bright future for all of our students. <laughs> I speak uh, on behalf of everyone and they're welcome to speak for themselves as well but uh, thank you for all you do and it's uh, it's an honor to serve uh, I concur you're here item 2b Dr. Stock presentation of the score check all right I'll ask mr. Cox to come introduce this item present husbands members of the board Dr. Stockton the SCORE program is an Energy Texas program. SCORE stands for Schools Conserving Resources. I'm pleased to introduce Mike Shoemaker, a senior program consultant for Energy Texas, uh, who is here tonight to make a really nice check presentation to Conroe <laughs> ISD. Uh, Mike? <laughs> Dan, I appreciate it. I, my name, I'm not going to use the microphone. Hopefully everyone can hear me. My name is uh, Philip Lanier with Energy Texas, along with Victor Inman with Energy Force Mike Shoemaker. We are uh, part of our Energy Efficiency Program. We're here to present the district uh, a check tonight for $180,000. Woohoo! Great, great check. <laughs> 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 our largest check recipient this year through our Energy Score program. As Dan mentioned, it's an energy efficiency program that is designed to work with our schools uh, to help identify opportunities to help schools reduce their operating costs, save energy, and you know go green. Um, again, proud to say that this is our largest check recipient for 2014, our largest check uh, that we've ever given to a school, higher education college. So uh, very proud to uh, present this to wow. <laughs>
we want to incentivize you to do more projects. So I know I've worked with, with, with Easy and Foster and, and Marshall on, um, um, Evan Rogers, sorry, on identifying new projects for 2015 and beyond. So I have a feeling we're going to be back here again, this time again next year, to give you guys with an additional check. You know, on behalf of the Entropy Solutions uh, Program from Entropy Texas, the school program, thank you, and uh, we, we look, look forward to working with you guys more and more. Awesome. Stairs, do we have anybody signed up for citizen participation? Very good. Okay. Item three, consent agenda. I believe everybody has had this for a number of days. Does anybody wish to remove an item to talk about it individually? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I so move approval. Second. second. And a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. And that passes. Item 4A, uh, are we going to talk about the paper again? Mr. Cox? Yes, sir. Very good. I'll ask Mr. Cox to come up and present that item, please. President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, I recommend that the Board of Trustees approve the 2013-2014 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Before we get into this item, I would like to recognize two of our, our two great leaders in our finance department that are most responsible for this excellent report that we're going to present tonight. Darren Rice and Janice Stowers are here tonight. I want to give them a hand. And is Karen Oh, Karen's there, too. I didn't see Karen. Uh, I didn't see Karen here. But these people are, are, are the key people in our organization that uh, make this all happen. And, and we're presenting an excellent report tonight. The report was presented to the Audit Committee uh, of, of CISD uh, Board of Trustees on Monday, January 12, 2014, for their review and comments. The report was favorably received by the, the Audit Committee. And Sarah Roberts with Weaver, a senior audit manager, is here tonight to comment on the financial report and address any questions that you might have. And I'd like to call on Sarah to come forward. Good evening, everybody. I am here to give a brief presentation of the district's comprehensive annual financial report for the year ended August 31st, 2014. I'm just going to give a brief overview, some highlights of the report, and then I'd be happy to address any questions that you have. First of all, um, the objective of our audit was the expression of, opinion, of an opinion on the district's financial statements, and we issued our report dated January 12th, 20, 2015. And our opinion, as expressed in that report, was unmodified, meaning that in our opinion, the district's financial statements are fairly presented in all material respects in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Some highlights of the numbers from the report. The district's total net position as of August 31st, 2014, was approximately $137.8 million, which is a positive change of $15.2 million from last year. One thing that I want to point out is that the district implemented GASB 65 during this last reporting period. GASB 65 required um, bond issuance costs, which, which were previously capitalized as assets and amortized over the period of the bonds, to be expensed when incurred. So with the implementation of GASB 65, the district had a prior period restatement of approximately $8.9 million in its beginning net position. General fund fund balance at August 31st, 2014 was approximately 101.3 million, 
uh, which is about 27.5% of the period's general fund expenditures. The general fund had a positive change in fund balance for the period of $257,000, uh, which is after transfers out of $40.5 million. Mm -hmm. Finally, and last but not least, I want to briefly mention the, our single audit reports. We have two reports that we issued. The first one is a report on internal control over financial reporting and on compliance and other matters. In this report, we say that we did not identify any material weaknesses in internal control and didn't identify any reportable non-compliance. The second report that we issued is our report on compliance for each major program and on internal control over compliance. The district's major program for this last fiscal year was Title I. In our report, we expressed an un unmodified opinion on compliance and identified no material weaknesses in internal control over compliance. That's all I have. And I'd be happy to take any questions. Motion to accept. I second. Any discussion? No. Thank you very much, ma'am. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Or aye. excuse me, raising your right hand. I apologize. And li uh, all opposed, like sign. Thank you very much. Great job, gentlemen, ladies. Item five, uh, I'm, excuse me, item four B, 2015 school bond refunding sale. Dr. Stockton. Mr. Cox, if you'll present that item, please. <clears throat> Once again, I recommend the Board of Trustees approve the order authorizing the issuance of Conroe Independent School District unlimited tax refunding bonds, setting certain parameters for the bonds, authorizing the superintendent and chief financial officer to approve the amount, the interest rate, price, including the terms thereof, and certain procedures and provisions related thereto. Our, our financial advisor, John Roebuck with BOSC, is here tonight uh, uh, to uh, present some information on the refunding and answer any questions that you might have. We also have our bond counsel, Tom Sage, here tonight as well. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mr. Cox. President Husbands, member of the board, Dr. Stockton, John Roebuck with BOSC. Thank you for having me out tonight. Uh, I pre prepared a presentation, should be on your screens there. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to start off with the bond uh, market as it is today. Uh, this is the bond buyer index. This is a snapshot of the bond market every Thursday. Of a double A rated bonds across the country. If you'll follow that blue line, that's the type of bonds the school district issues general obligation, tax back debt. If you look to the far right, you'll see a significant drop off in the rates there. Uh, showing here at 3.42%. I actually put this pre presentation together last week. It's actually now at a 3.29%. Do we so get to take advantage of that, that Delta? We're, we're trying to. <laughs> we're trying to. <clears throat> about two basic points off of all-time low, so we're in a great environment to sell bonds at this time. Next page, uh, we're coming to you to seek a, a perimeter order to sell refunding bonds. Uh, these bonds listed here on this page are the bonds we're looking to refund. It's the district's Series 2008 bonds and also Series 2009A bonds. The 2008 bonds, approximate principal amount of $44 million, and the 2009A bonds, approximately $75 million in bonds we can refund. We're taking these bonds out that are about a 4.75 percent alarm, as low as we possibly can. Currently, uh, based on the numbers that we ran on the next page, we're taking the bonds down to a 3.44 percent. So uh, we're, we're looking at a, a drop of about a, about a one and one and a half percent uh, yield. Uh, if you look at the far left, uh, current total debt service requirements of the district. Uh, the middle column there is the debt service on the bonds that we're looking to refund, plus the principal, proposed principal interest based on current markets, and then further right to total debt service requirements after the refunding and the estimated savings. Uh, by refunding these bonds, we're estimating we can save the district about $17.1 million. And uh, these, these numbers are a little conservative. Um, the, the market continues to, uh, the yields continue to drop. Treasury rates were down again today, which Means municipal market may come down tomorrow. So we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. see that. We'll try to take advantage of as mass as possible to sell these bonds. And that will lead us to the tentative schedule of events. Uh, on this on this schedule of events, uh, we're actually in the middle already. We've already started the uh, preliminary official statement, the offering document that goes to investors. Uh, we've also submitted uh, applications to the permit school fund to receive the permit school fund AAA rating for the bonds. Uh, we'll continue to work on the, the document, have rating calls the first week of February. 
then it'll look to sell the bonds the uh, week of February 16th, and then have the bonds approved by the Attorney General, get all the paperwork done, and close on March 16th. Just one comment, that $17 million is over 20 years, right? Yes, sir. It's not discounted to present day, right? No, that, that, present that's day. Actual, actual savings, debt service, debt service. Oh, what is uh, EV what is savings, based on these numbers, is about 12.9. Uh, 12.9. Yes, <clears throat> all right. 10.8% PV savings. We look at refunding, so if there's anything over 3% is a good deal, this is 10.8. So it's 10 foot tall and bulletproof. I got you. I have a question, too. We're not extending any maturities out. We're taking the present maturities which is, I look like 21 years was about the, the longest duration that we were going yes, out. Out to, out to 2035. Right. We're, we're going to issue 25, out to 2035. Right. Okay. That, yes, Great. Thank you. Great. Anything motion? Motion approved. And it did include transaction calls. Yes, yes. Okay, motion approved. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Very much. Good job. Well, thank, thank you, Mr. Sage. Thank you for, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it. I'll get us at two basis points. All right, item 5A, uh, Oak Ridge ninth grade mm -hmm. uh, GMP budget amendment. I'm going to ask Easy Foster, our director of planning construction, to come present uh, the next several items. President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockman, it's my pleasure tonight to bring for you a request for approval to an, an amendment to the GMP for the Oak Ridge ninth grade campus additions project. The request for this amendment uh, to the proposal uh, given to us by Duratech, our construction manager, is to facilitate the purchase, uh, delivery, and installation of the administration and conference room furniture. Duratech has submitted a proposal to increase their GMP by the amount of $62,564. It's important to note that the furniture has been specified by Conroe ISD's purchasing department and utilizes the on-site construction manager, Duratech, to facilitate the ordering, the coordination of delivery and setup of the furniture as they're uh, managing that, that job site. With this, amendment to the, the, with this amendment, the total contract will be brought to $13,874,504. It's also important to note that this is not adding it, it's a movement of funds. The funds were existing, an existing furniture budget that we plan to use with purchasing. We're trying, this is a pilot program with the construction manager to better facilitate the transfer uh, ownership of the campus. The funds for this project have been allocated from the 2008 bond. And this time I'd like to ask for your approval. Motion. A motion. A motion. And a second. Second. Any discussion? I have a discussion. We're going to take bond money to spend $62,000. Well, it, it's bond money that currently been allocated for the furniture for that campus. So it's our but I understand, but this is for, as I understand, the installation and delivery and setup. This is to purchase the furniture. Correct. Uh, okay. Take the delivery and set it up. Okay. And this is, and it's important to note, this is phase one of the furniture delivery. The Oak Ridge Night Grade campus is being turned over in phases. Right. This is just for the admin and conference room areas. Okay. If this program were to be successful, and our contractor manages successfully, we'll be back uh, with the remainder of the furniture for this campus. And you had mentioned that this was just a shifting of funds from one to another. And where's it coming from? Where are the money's coming from? Uh, Out of what? We allocate money. When we put together a project of this magnitude, we allocate money in the bond fund for that project, specifically for furniture and equipment. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, everybody in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. <clears throat> Mr. Foster, item 5B, excess controls upgrade phase two. Yeah, at this time, I'd like to ask for your approval uh, for a project we've titled the Upgrade Front Door Security, multiple schools as project phase two. If you recall, uh, uh, last year, last spring, we authorized a project to upgrade the front door security, and we touched 31 campuses. Uh, this is 20 additional campuses, so it brings us through the elementary schools, intermediate units, and the junior highs to allow card-controlled access at the front doors. Uh, the proposal for this upgrade to the front door security uh, is proposed by Sole Source Vendor, which is Preferred Technologies. They have the ability to custom integrate the software between our different systems, so that we're integrating the software for the uh, the security cameras, our existing Cisco phone system, 
and the uh, access control system, the card control system. This system allows the ability to view the uh, the uh, people entering the building from the from the reception area, uh, speak to them so that they can identify themselves, and then be granted access to the building. The project will provide cameras, front door intercom, electronic hardware on those doors to allow the unlocking uh, from a remote location. We're also going back to the original 31 campuses to upgrade the phone system for the principal's offices so that the principal, when they're in their office, they can also operate the front door from their, from their desk without having to exit their office to find out who's at the front door. The total cost for this project is $318,245, and the funding for this project is allotted in the general fund. At this time, I'd like to request your approval. Motion. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I have a quick question for you. Okay. What, what's the response time for on our, to say our elementary schools? If someone were to to unauthorized coming to the school, how, what's the, what's the what's the response time? What what's needed to do? They have to actually pick up the phone and call somebody, or is it? Is it... Uh, you're talking about uh, like a police response time? Yes. Uh, I I do not have that information. You can tell you. <clears throat> I think Chief Harness might be able to answer that. Chief, would, do you have information to that regard, please? And, that, and that's to the elementary and intermediate campuses because the other campuses have an officer, correct? Right. High schools and junior highs have an officer on campus, so it would be uh, spontaneous. Uh, in the elementary and intermediate level, we have two uh, patrol units that in each sector, each high school, that in itself, their primary responsibility is the elementary and intermediate level campus. Uh, they serve those campuses. I think it's also important to uh, a project of this magnitude isn't necessarily uh, it's not an all-in type situation this is to provide a layer of security to allow that to, that response time to be more effective yeah my, my question was outside of security that you're you're just bringing forth here but understood folks i just have one question you said we we touched 31 campuses last year and we're going to touch another 20 this year that's 51 and that brings us to everything but the high schools um, or, I mean, the, the numbers aren't working for me. Where are we short? Or a couple of our campuses are um, not the traditional buildings you think of. Fair enough. Yes, sir. We, we don't have a, a, a It just panic. has to be handled differently. Fair enough. We don't have a quick dial, a panic button, or, 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 or something that we can easily implement at a relatively low cost. That well, the, one of the interesting features of this particular program, the access control system, is uh, as part of their software package, there is a, a function that will allow a, a, a panic button, uh, so to speak. We have not opted to uh, engage that function yet, but that functionality does exist when we're at a point where it makes sense to add that, add that technology. Yeah. Okay. I got a question. This is phase two, so I'm, I'm the new guy, and I'm going to use that to my advantage as long as I possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many phases are there? I mean, this is phase two. I understand what phase one was. Phase two is there going to be a phase three, four, five? Well, I mean, ultimately, I mean, if, if we had the ability to, with an unlimited budget, to attack every door in every building, uh, we could, we could do so. Uh, we've chosen these, this current located uh, current project uh, <clears throat> vehicle to concentrate on the front doors. Uh, I would imagine that over time, if, if this is an accepted uh, form of entry, gain access to the building, we would like to expand this to the interior doors or the, let's say that the exterior doors, but the ones that are behind our fence. So we can take, uh, eliminate keys from the from the teachers. So we're not having to pass out keys. We're passing out uh, access cards, which are much easier to deactivate, reactivate as, as staff turns over or other problems are encountered. Um, so will there be another phase? Potentially, uh, as Dr. Stockton alluded to earlier, we also have several. But we're speaking of the front doors. We're at up to a point now where the buildings that remain are ones that are difficult to uh, operate. 
because they leave the clientele there. The high schools, for example, do a lot of building to building transfer mm -hmm. of students, which doesn't necessarily facilitate or make it, the ease of imp implementation goes up considerably. And the school that you've selected to do this on, how did you how did you come up with these schools? Uh, I worked with uh, Steve Hines, sorry, not Steve, I'm <laughs> Steve Meir, sorry, I was confusing. Uh, Dr. Hines and, and Steve Meir uh, together with our engineering staff to uh, uh, en engineering consultants so that we could identify. Uh, last year it was the low-hanging fruit. It was the difficult elementary schools that were that might model into other, other buildings. Uh, last year's phase one got through a majority of, of those prototypical school buildings we've got. This year we, we've looked at some buildings that weren't necessarily prototypes. There were one-off buildings like uh, Buckaloo Elementary for, for one is, a, is an example of a one-off building. So we've tried to get through with this phase, get through the elementary schools, get through the intermediate schools, and then into the junior highs, and uh, where, mm -hmm. where the, the ease of entry at high schools, like Connor High School ninth grade, for example, there was already some system there. We're adding to that to make it uh, come in line with the system. <coughs> okay. I have yeah. one of the uh, regarding. Uh, the security, does it have a feature to be able to save the images or are we just taking live video? Uh, well, the, our, our security system does generally record video. Okay. Uh, I mean, so we, we can go back in history and Chief Harness might have more detail on that as okay. well. Yeah, we use that quite often. Our dispatchers that I've been with the also video, anytime there's a warm or any type of call that dispatch <coughs> Thank we you. actually examined that cost of that feature you were the panic. You, you referenced earlier. Well, the, the, the feature is, is inherent uh, to the system that we purchased. So it, it, uh, there's probably some licensing fees that we would have to, to actually activate it. Uh, but the, the cost would be relatively minor. The, okay. the implementation is more of a, a procedural implementation on our side. What happens when that button's pressed? Who, who does it contact? Well, let me reverse that question at this point. Is it if it's not cost, why would we not have activated that? I'm, and I'm sure there's a good reason, but why, why have we chosen not to at this point? Yeah. Five minutes is, is just a long time for me. Yeah, well, that was, I mean, that, that was not a scope of our discussion when we first started. It just happens to be a feature that came that uh, the rest of the team is not, not aware of until I said it tonight. <laughs> we will okay. investigate that very quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's wonder. Appreciate that, Mr. Foster. Any other discussion? Question? No, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a, a motion and a second. If uh, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand, all opposed, like sign. Thank you, sir. Thank Great. you, Mr. Foster. Um, five, item 5C, approval of GMP, Oak Ridge Elementary, and miscellaneous mechanical for 2015. This time I'd like to request your approval for a guaranteed maximum price uh, proposal from Ellisor Constructors of CM. Construction manager we've selected for the uh, what's titled the Oak Ridge Elementary Miscellaneous Mechanical 2015 project. Uh, this project is primarily a life cycle uh, for uh, the major scope being Oak Ridge Elementary, which is getting a life cycle overhaul of their mechanical system. Uh, so if you can imagine uh, everything that you don't see from the ceiling up uh, is getting redone at, at Oak Ridge Elementary. Uh, Oak Ridge Elementary gets a uh, new piping, uh, some new chillers, some new air handlers, some individual control, room control in the in the classroom. Uh, it gets an upgrade to the uh, technology systems within the building. It gets a fire sprinkler system. It essentially brings that building up to what we would consider today's uh, the standard we built to today. Good job. Uh, in addition, we're looking at the uh, the annex to that building. There's a fourth grade annex which doesn't have a ceiling in the classroom. Uh, we are adding ceilings to those classrooms to help make temperature control in those classrooms better as well. In addition to that, we've got some chiller replacements, which are normal life cycle replacements. Uh, Vogel uh, is getting new chillers there, and Candy Creek is getting uh, their last their many chillers uh, done in their life cycle. 
We feel the upgrades are necessary to replace old equipment, improve safety, uh, quality, and efficiency of these campuses. Um, and one thing that uh, was mentioned earlier, the LED upgrades, Oak Ridge Elementary we'll talk about a little bit later in my presentations is one that received new LED light fixtures for the T12. At the end of this project, it will be a, a complete building. It'll be a complete LED campus. So there should be some uh, additional incentives coming coming from that as part of the 2015 incentive program. Again, we've selected Ellisor Constructors, our construction manager at risk. Ellisor successfully completed pro projects of this complexity and magnitude many times for us, uh, which makes them a good choice. Uh, we've advertised it in the Conroe Courier, Houston Chronicle, uh, at the local plan rooms around. Uh, I was present for when, when bids were received. Uh, so at this point, we'd like to re uh, recommend the approval of a guaranteed maximum price of $9,625,804.90. Uh, funding for this project has been allocated in the 2008 bond, and this time I'd like to request your approval. I hear a motion. Uh, Mr. President, I move we approve. <laughs> in a second. Any discussion? Yeah. Any questions? All those in favor, signal by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. And that passes. And only item 5D, Oak Ridge High School Portable Building Power. At this time, I'd like to ask for your approval um, <clears throat> for a proposal for a new auxiliary electrical service that's going to provide additional electrical capacity at the Oak Ridge High School senior campus. This will provide the needed electrical service uh, to the campus to accommodate additional portable buildings which are scheduled to be placed at that site. Uh, the proposals we requested uh, were from annual bid electrical contractors. We requested uh, quotes from three of our annual electrical contractors. We received two proposals and one declined a bid. The contractor we're recommending for this is Diamond Electric. They had the uh, best value proposal at $133,826. And the funding for this project has been allotted in the general fund. At this time, I'd like to request your approval. Okay. So moved. And a second? Second. Second. Any questions? Comments? How many portables do we have over there? Uh, the last count uh, between the senior campus and the ninth current campus, I counted 27 portable buildings. Oh. Jesus Christ. And is that going up or is that the new count? That is going up. That's going up. So that's why we need more power? Yes, sir. Okay. Power station we need a new high school. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I, just just making sure these portables, we're gonna put in, we'll be putting kids in these portables. I mean, they're going to be classrooms. It's not like scores and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah these are intended to be classroom portables. Okay. Any other mm -hmm. comments? Discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. And item 5E. Capital Improvements Update. Awesome. This time I'd like to give you an update on the capital improvements that uh, we're working on throughout the district. Uh, starting with the Oak Ridge High School 9th grade campus, this project is approximately half complete. I'm going to apologize now because our pictures look a lot like they did last month. Uh, <laughs> if you uh, have lived in the same area that I have, it's been raining quite a bit in the last uh, three, four weeks. So you've seen the uh, exterior of the building has seen a little progress. It's important to note the admin section of this building uh, is about six or so weeks from, from completion. It'll take us approximately six weeks to uh, receive all the furniture we just approved earlier at tonight's meeting. So the timing of the turnover for admin works with the, with the schedule we've got. Now the, the area we're looking at now is the exterior. Again, it looks just like it did last month for the uh, classrooms, uh, the additional classrooms, the culinary arts, uh, and the art labs for this building. Uh, the progress that we do see has been all made on the interior. Uh, so you can see the walls going up and things uh, of that nature for that, that area of the building. On the other end of the building, where we're adding the science labs. Uh, the, this area doesn't see a whole lot of progress because it's working underneath an open roof deck. Uh, with the weather, with the break in the weather we had over the last week or so, uh, that roof deck is scheduled, I believe, at 4 tomorrow morning, uh, which will allow turn loose a lot more work on the inside of that section. Uh, the project is still on schedule, and we're making progress where we need to make progress to turn over uh, at the end of this coming summer. Vogel Intermediate, I'm happy to report that uh, this building did turn over uh, for use of the students at, over Christmas break of January 6th. Saw students moving into these uh, brand new classrooms on that building. Uh, like Oak Ridge ninth grade, the exterior of the building is where this project suffered. 
Uh, I don't have any uh, exterior pictures because there's a lot of dirt where there should be grass in the yard. Uh, but with the break in the weather, uh, they should be uh, dressing that up uh, this month as well. Now really what I'm talking about is the T12 LED lighting project. Uh, what you're looking at here is the finished product of the, the library at the Women's High School. Uh, we spent a great deal of time uh, this summer into the fall replacing uh, what we came to original with was about 14,500 LED light fixtures. Uh, that 14,500 light fixtures is what generated uh, a, a large portion of the check you received earlier, earlier in the meeting. Uh, what I'd like to report to you now is, is that as we're nearing the end of that end of that contract, we've replaced, a, as of tonight, a total of 16,209 light fixtures. So we have uh, met the goal, as I told you, of trying to reach 16,000 fixtures over the last couple of board meetings. Uh, we are nearing the end of it, so we've tried to do whole buildings at a time, which list uh, brings the, uh, the list that you see here. And now we're down to a point where we have savings where I, I can't necessarily visit one building and tell you that I'm going to replace all the T12 light fixtures in that building. So we're narrowing down that savings. We've worked with uh, Marshall Schrader and maintenance and our contractor. We're going to take the savings efforts calculated in, by attic stock light fixtures so that our maintenance department will have these light fixtures in hand so they can do their smaller projects over time. There's also, uh, as you can see, there's lots of incentive for doing it. Uh, and uh, I, we're going to continue investigating and look at and hopefully bring you back to a project like this to, to continue uh, to invest in our, in our building. And that's it for tonight. Good. Thank you, Mr. Foster. <clears throat> job. Okay. Item 6A, executive session. Item 8A, Level 3 Grievance Hearing. I'll turn it over to Mrs. Glass. Thank you, Dr. Stockton, Mr. Husbands. This meeting of the Connor Independent School District Board of Trustees, which is convened on January 20th, 2015, with the following board members present is Melanie Bush, Scott Kidd, Ray Sanders, John Husbands, Dayton Williams, Jessica Powell, and Mr. Skeeter Hubert. We are meeting for the purpose of hearing an appeal in accordance with local board policy DGBA. This grievance involves a complaint made against three district staff members by another staff member. Therefore, under the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Section 551074 and 551082, this meeting will be held in closed session. In addition, in accordance with Government Code Section 551071, the, uh, the board may consult with its attorney regarding any and all matters while in closed session. Is the grievant, Michelle Hernandez, present this evening? Let the record reflect that Ms. Hernandez is not present this evening. However, at this time, everyone not associated with the hearing uh, will now leave the room and we will conduct the hearing even in Ms. Hernandez's absence. The board will take no action while it's in the executive session and the time is now 6.59. <coughs> I get you a uh, 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 Absolutely. <laughs> Back in open session, it's 8 to 45. All right. Do I hear a motion? Mr. President, I move that Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees amend the contract for the superintendent, for superintendent Dr. Don Stockton as follows. Extend the contract for one additional year beyond the contract term as set out in the contract and revise the annual base salary of the superintendent to be $343,000 and remove the provision providing for annual annuity to be paid to the superintendent moving forward. I hear a uh, second. 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 Any further discussion? not all those uh, in favor signify by raising your right hand all opposed like sign thank you very much Most Dr. Doctor, they'll just one moment please <laughs> Dr. Stockton we uh, give you a chance to say something as well I just want to tell you how much you know, the night where we are, are appreciated and valued how much you're appreciated and valued and uh, this district uh, has come a long way baby I don't know how else to say that so we, we thank you for all you do each and every day, night, 
morning, early, whatever, all the time. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's an honor to work for this board. It's an honor to work for the Conroe School District. And um, this is my 29th year in Conroe, so it's my life, you know. And and, and, and my lovely wife has joined us, and she's. Uh, I'm sorry. And she's been in the school district 27 years, so this is our life. And, and there's so many people. I mean, you give your uh, time to our school district. There's so many people who spend their, you know, most of their life doing. Uh, something they love, and I'm one of those people. So thank you for the opportunity. And and I'm sorry in in the darkness. I, I you know you don't look like Kathy Gibson or anybody else, but I just didn't realize you were there. I apologize. Thank you for loaning him to loaning him to us. Uh, you know, 24 hours a day or whatever. It takes. Team Stockton. Team, Team Stockton. Stockton. Like that. Bless your heart. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. We're adjourned. Thank you, ladies. Yes.